It's good to see you. All thanks to Professor Fig's quick thinking. Now what? Approach the pedestal in the antechamber and read the book that appears. What can I expect to find in the book? A story. I cannot say more. You may recognize some elements of it as I was inspired by a tale with which many wizarding children are familiar. I suspect there will be more to this than reading a book. Your suspicions are correct. We shall speak when you are finished. Has this been under the headmaster's nose all this time? Revelio. That must be the pedestal. Am I? Professor Fitzgerald? Can you hear me? I am here. In this place, you may call me Neve. You shall be witness to a fable. Pay attention. Things are not always as they seem. You must move swiftly and cautiously. Use the tools you encounter to find me. In this place, as in life, death takes many forms. Avoid each of them at all costs. Just right. I see a staircase straight ahead. Find me if I go up there. They're gone for now. I need to get out of here. Where could Neve be? Too many. I must cross this road as fast as I can.
That's where I need to go, but I need to find a way past them. Nothing this way, but more danger. I need to turn back. There's no getting past them that way. Close tight. That doorway looks like the only safe way forward. my chance. They can't see me at all. I can get closer to them. This is the way forward. Finally free. Now where are you, Neve? death thus far, but have yet to find me. Keep searching, but this time you will be unable to hide. Wield the wand you see before you. Do not squander its extraordinary power. Defender! 
pass through the mourners ahead. Nothing is what it seems. She's gone. Dear sweet Neve. <laughs> Me. May her memory be a treasure to us forever. You found me, but you cannot undo what has been done. The magic of the stone can only conjure a shadow of my former self. But there is no light without shadow as there is no shadow without light. Simply because you can eliminate darkness does not always mean that you should. Remember that as you witness my memory. Dora, what you did for your father was remarkable, wasn't it? And Percival needn't worry about the strands of emotion or the traces that this magic leaves. I found a way to contain all of it. You haven't stopped. Goblin Silver. You spoke to a goblin about this. Don't worry, he has no idea what we're containing. We don't know what effect any of this may have. The emotions, the dark traits. You sound like Percival. And as it happens, I do know. It is a source of strength, of focus. Somehow it enhances my ability to wield magic. I don't follow, Isadora. I think we can harness it. Power like this is not to be toyed with in the wrong hands. You saw again. what I did for my father. Only have imagined the good we could do. Everyone is in some kind of pain. This must stop. All of us. You've kept this power to yourselves for so long because you fear it. I choose to embrace it. Is it true? Has someone completed the first three trials? It is, and I have. But you are so... Young? I know. You must be Professor Bacall. I am. Pleased to meet you. The pensive memory I just witnessed was Isadora inhaling painful emotions. She was.
I found it disturbing. But how did she gain power from it? How did she harness it? It was disturbing. Although, I wonder that you are asking about her power. I hesitate to reveal the location of my pensive to someone who, perhaps, has yet to understand the responsibility of power. I can assure you, Professor, I do. In fact, what you don't yet know is that a dangerous goblin called Ranrock has accessed the repository at Rookwood Castle. He has learned to harness the contents of it as a source of immense power. He plans to use that power against wizardkind. We have no time to waste. I see. Nonetheless, the knowledge you shall gain after you witness my memories is too valuable to share without further consideration. I shall require time to confer with the other Keepers. It seems we have no choice but to wait, frustrating as it is. I heard what you told Professor Bakar. Isadora was inhaling emotions to gain power? She was. And she pulled emotions, as she did from her father, from Professor Fitzgerald, without permission. Monstrous. What's more, she said that she found a way to store the traces of magic she extracted in goblin silver. The repositories? Possibly. There's something I didn't get a chance to tell you earlier. Ranrock has been digging at locations tied to the five names he found in the journals of a goblin metal worker named Bragball. Five names? The Keepers, and who else? Isadora Morganak? Precisely. That's how he's been one step ahead of us. Gringotts, the Tower, Rookwood Castle. If the Keepers won't tell you where the next trial is yet, I say we at least maintain a watch on Ranrock. Perhaps he'll lead us to more information. Perhaps. I hope to hear from Lord Gok soon. I haven't heard anything since I learned of the drills. Oh, and as you've probably guessed by now, your Polyjuice plan worked like a charm. I knew it would. I may have done too good a job distracting Black. I had no idea he can't hold his fire whiskey. I shouldn't have reacted so bitterly about your goblin friend. I apologize. I hope we can finish what we started with the triptych. Please meet me at the southern coast. We can search for the final canvas piece. Rebellion. I'm going to have oh. my own telescope today. I've already decided. Cross one's champion, eh?
What do we have? Alohomora. Revelio. Alohomora. Revelio. Alohomora. Revelio. Leviosa. Rebellion. Rebellion. Revelio. Revelio. That relic is the key to saving Anne. I know it. Meet me outside of Feldcroft as soon as you can.
Revelio.
Revelio. Revelio. Did let Deke know about the newborn Thestral?
Hello, Deke. You'll be pleased to know that a little Thestral was born. How wonderful to have more Thestrals in our world. Such misunderstood beasts. I'm sorry that we can both see Thestrals, Deke. Deke is privileged to see such majestic beasts. But sometimes wishes Deke couldn't. Deke is to blame. What do you mean, to blame? Years ago, Deke's master ordered Deke to help him capture a phoenix, the rarest of all beasts that master had spotted high on a cliff. The phoenix was the most beautiful beast Deke had ever seen. Deke begged master to leave her be. When Deke hesitated to climb up the cliff as ordered, Deke had to punish himself. As Deke punished himself, Master grew angrier and angrier, and in his frustration, cast at the regal bird. Deke suspects the phoenix was protecting eggs when it swooped down in fear and fury. Before Deke could reach him, Master fell from the cliff. Deke stayed on that cliffside for days, punishing himself, before Tobbs found him. It sounds to me as if your master got what he deserved. Deke never wanted anyone to get hurt. Not the Phoenix, not Tobbs, and not even Master. Deke often wonders what became of that Phoenix. Deke feels fortunate to be at Hogwarts now, helping you rescue beasts. Perhaps Deke can make amends for what came before. Revelio. Mine now, damn you guys. Professor, could you tell me how you and Nasty ended up at Hogwarts? I can. That is an easy question. We are here because of Professor Weasley. You knew Professor Weasley when you were in Uganda? I knew of Professor Weasley. As you may or may not be aware, Professor Weasley's work once took her around the globe. Without providing detail that is not mine to share, I can say that she was well known in our wizarding community for well, sharing magical knowledge between countries. I confess that I'm surprised to hear Professor Weasley would ever do that sort of thing. I suspect there is much about each of your professors that would surprise and impress you. Such exchanges of information, ministry sanctioned or not, have occurred for centuries. It was an African sorcerer, in fact, who shared the unlocking charm with a certain wizard from London. A thief. 
rather unfortunately. I see. But back to your original question. Professor Weasley had heard of my work and life in Matabeliland and my time teaching at Wagadu. She was deputy headmistress at Hogwarts by then, and when the position of divination professor became available, she contacted me. Her timing was perfect. I had just foreseen a change in that size and my circumstances and knew that we needed to leave Uganda. Natsai was as ready as I was for a new adventure. So, off we went. That is spoken of your move. She was quite kind to me my first day here, in charms. That sounds like Natsai. I'm glad she has found a friend in you. Now, I must return to my work. As I've told Natsai, do be careful. I had a vision earlier this year of her with a friend. Flying on winged beasts. Perhaps unsurprisingly, she will neither confirm nor deny my visions, <laughs> unless it suits her. years. Four hundred years I've been hearing this and I've truly had enough. I simply cannot be with you any longer. Do you have any news of Marmaduke's crest? In today's lesson, we will cover a truly thrilling event. The Goblin Rebellion of 1752 and all its triumphant tragedy. But more specifically, we will address the devastating effects it had on the wizard milling industry. Throughout the many goblin battles, countless wizard cloaks were lost. Actually, we do know the number. 632. But history occurs outside the classroom. And look, it's time for my constitutional. One can practically osmos the history flowing through Hogwarts. I think the professor wants us to follow him. And now for a stroll to the bell tower entrance hall. Along with the rest of the castle, it was completed in the late early Middle Ages. The hall and the bell towers that loom above it contain myriad interesting artifacts. Good to see you again. Recovered from that nasty bout of dragon pox, have we? I, uh, that wasn't me, Professor. I'm new here. Are you? Well then, uh, welcome. No doubt you're eagerly anticipating my analysis of various wizarding councils, codes, statutes, and of course, goblin rebellion. Not all goblins are rebellious. Some venture into wizarding politics, such as 
Here gets the ugly. Some are talented artisans, such as Bragbor the Boastful. Did you say Bragbor? I... I think I know that name. Hmm. Well known for his metalwork. I would imagine much of his goblin wrought iron and silver has survived to this very day. Oh, of course. Hodgok said he was an ancestor of Ranrock. Oh, where were we? Oh, oh yes. <clears throat> Back to our class topic for today. Grimbold Weft. Another notable historical figure. Uh, he's right nearby. Curious students can find him on display here. Students introduce themselves to this hero of Hogwarts. This is a century's Rebellion. old Fearless mouse hunter and devoted study companion. People have always loved their pets. I find that comforting. What are you up to now? This Grimbold wolf sounds like a help. A hero. Oh, yes. I see you found Grimbold Weft. Why didn't you tell us it was just his skull? Well, of course he's just a skull. Everyone knows Grimbold Weft died of Dragonbox in 1753. Now, let's turn our attention to the agreeability and general good nature of Sir Affbuddle. He's also nearby. See what you can learn from him for your next assignment. Standing Why in could eternal but is symbolic well, watch over the bell tower, than that of a retinue of say the loyal least. knights, or rather, statues of knights, I should clarify. Keen Abandoning class to wander the halls is in keeping with Professor Binz's manner of countenance teaching. nestled among the ranks. What I wouldn't give to be back on a broom right now. Was not won by Sir Affpuddle was the friendliest knight. Combat, nor Ergo, by his slaying bloodthirsty dragons. Gesture when one Rather in training yards and sculleries. Where his warm and approachable demeanor was celebrated by old friends and newcomers alike. I encourage everyone to make the waving statue. Rebellion. Uh, students often complain about the many staircases at Hogwarts, uh, but they never bother me. Oh. Professor Binns, I found the statue of Sir Affpuddle. Ah, well done. Alas, Sir Affpuddle's affability was his undoing. Died instantly trying to befriend a basilisk. Eye contact is not always to be encouraged. So beloved was he that even some goblins mourned his passing. Of course, that did not bode well with the rest of the goblins, most of whom could not abide mourning the loss of a wizard. Goblins and wizard kind will never trust each other. Yes, well, it takes a cauldron to raise a chispurfle, as they say. Hmm. History does tend to repeat. It is a series of patterns, a thought both comforting and disconcerting. The wise student, such as yourself, will learn from it. History is written by those who do their schoolwork, so they say. Or at least, I like to say that. Oh. Rebellion. How can we do so much and accomplish so little? These bits... Sir Skagglethorpe the Heedless once challenged a mountain troll to a game of musical scare. <gasps> there you are. You have the news of Marmot's crest? 
Leave it to Bins to make the most interesting school in the world seem dull. If you fail History of Magic, you're doomed to repeat it. The, the class, that is. What was it you needed my help with, Samantha? You were going into the tomb east of Brockborough when my ancestor was laid to rest. There, you were to place a crest upon his sarcophagus. I'm hoping that will reverse the curse that has turned my brother's feet to beads. Wonder who lives here. Hello, Hamora. What do we have? Rebellion. Mine now, Demi guys. Nice to meet you. Welcome. I'm Bernard Indiai, and this is my shop. Is there anything I can help you with? What do you have for sale? What are we in the market for today? A 